Okay, I'd like to call to order this Thursday, September 3rd, 2020, meeting of the Springfield Historic Commission. Um, and let me just read a couple of caveats here. In order to enable municipal government to continue its important work during the COVID-19 pandemic while assuring both city employees and citizens can satisfy CDC social distance and guidelines, City of Springfield is providing public notice to conduct a public hearing util utilizing remote technology. To view the public hearings, uh, Channel 17 on Springfield Comcast Network, Focus Springfield Community TV website. Uh, public comment will also be taken in two segments. First public comment period will take place prior to the meeting discussion. Second public comment will take place after the meeting will remain open for 24 hours. To provide public comment in writing, mail to the Springfield Store Commission, 70 Tapley Street in Springfield, Mass 0104, or email a allen, A-A-L-L-E-N, at springfieldcityhall.com. And to provide for public comment by voicemail, 413-750-3223. Messages received will be played at the Historic Commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. All commentators should state their name, address, and company or organizational affiliations in addition to the items their comments pertain to. Uh, just a couple things before I take the roll call. Uh, this is a, we are a, a, a quorum of the commission, not the, the quorum of the, those in attendance. So at any given time, we need at least four members to vote in the affirmative for something to pass. Uh, we do have a quorum. We have five members on. We have Commissioner Walsh, Commissioner Nardi, Commissioner Duquette, Commissioner McFarlane, and Commissioner Kroll present. Uh, are there any other commissioners I didn't mention? Okay. Uh, first item is a tabled item 77, Dartmouth Street, remediation of unapproved rear deck. Is the applicant for Dartmouth Street here? The applicant is not here. Uh, further, the applicant uh, stated to me earlier that he um, is looking to resolve this issue in the spring. So I'm not really sure how you guys want to proceed. You can simply vote it down. But again, he, this is a stop work order matter. So it's, it's really up to you guys how you want to proceed. If you want to go continue well, the stop work, I'm sorry. This you know, it's going to say this particular one will time out if we don't take action tonight. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So we have to have a vote of some manner. And what, what will happen to the stop work order? Well, I guess it's a matter of how you guys want me to proceed. If you want me to continue the stop work order or if you want to give them some time until the spring to try to resolve the matter. Do you need a vote on that, Elvin? I would. Okay. All right. All right, so the, the, the uh, applicant for the application for certificate appropriateness for 77 Dartmouth Street is not here. I'd, I'd entertain a motion to to, uh, to accept the application. So moved. Is there a second? second? I'm just, is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, the, we, the motion is if, if we need to deny it, the motion in order to not have any unauthorized work made. Um, is there any other discuss discussion on the motion? Can you also state what the work is just for the record? Yes, yeah, so the work is to replicate, th to replicate the three windows that were previously two windows beside the door on the rear of the house mm -hmm. and to put a fascia board on top of rail of the back patio deck. So the motion is to accept the certificate for appropriateness to, for the three windows, to, to two windows and a door, and a fascia board on the top rail of the deck. I just and want yeah. to add that you guys already uh, denied the window and door. So, I, so I the agree. Only... I just didn't have that in front of me. Yep, no uh, so any other discussion on that motion? Okay. All the votes will be by roll call, as you know, just to remind the, the public. Uh, so... Let me take the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Kroll? No. Commissioner McFarland? No. Commissioner Duquette? No. Uh, Commissioner Fittnardi? No. And Commissioner Walsh is no. Okay, so that, that application has been denied. Uh, hold on. So now we, we have also uh, an entertain a motion to continue the uh, stop work order. Uh, 
uh, Alvin, just just fill me in on how that what that will mean for the like. Do we have to put a date on it or, or whatever? So I guess my question is, if the homeowner doesn't resolve the matter, then I can send it to the law department. Or again, he's stating that he can resolve it in the spring. Do you want to give him that timetable to resolve it in the spring? Okay. Or do you want to move this forward to the law department? Okay. Um, I'd, enter, I'd enter a motion to, anybody wants to make a motion either way, we can make the motion, take a discussion, take a vote. I'm thinking about making a motion to, um, to get, knowing that it's already been denied, to make a motion that the stop work order be continued until the spring when the property owner has the opportunity to come back in front of the commission. So no other work can be done until then. Okay. You want to put a date on that end of that continuance? Uh, well, spring would be uh, the oh. end of up any time up before the end of May. Okay. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Okay. Discussion. Okay. My my general feeling is that it shouldn't really be that long, but I don't have an, any strenuous objection to it, but. End of May is, is getting on closer to summer instead of right. spring. Um, well, May 15th is actually the physical, the, the actual end of the spring. That's correct. Okay. You want, you want to rephrase your motion to a, put a date? Yes. Actual date? May 15th, 2021. Okay. Any other discussion on that motion? A motion to to continue the stop work order to May fifteenth. Okay, hearing none, I'll call a vote. Commissioner Kroll, yes. Commissioner Farland, yes. Commissioner Duquette, yes. Commissioner Nardi, yes. And Commissioner Walsh, is yes. Okay. Seventy-seven Dartmouth. Is there any other thing there we should be aware of, Alvin? Oh, you guys resolved the matter. Okay, thank you. Next is uh, continued. It's uh, 90 and a half Buckingham Street installation of rear door. Okay, let's see. Now let's see what this is. This is a hardship application to add a back door to the rear of the house for secondary way of egress, ingress, egress. I'd also like to repair existing porches. Okay, now I know we have pictures here. Okay, uh, is, the, is the petitioner here? That is... Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you just give us a little more information on your plan? I know there was a picture just of a roof. And then there's a picture of a kind of an unfinished uh, uh, porch kind of thing. Right. I, Actually, I, my contractor was supposed to be in on this call, and I don't think he is because okay. he was supposed to be here to answer the questions. Right. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to give him a call and see what he's doing and where he's at. Okay. And then I if we can just. Yeah, we can put this aside. Okay. And, and you can take, you know, get a get a uh, get a call in and see what you can do because uh, right. we do need more information on what you need to do before we can right. vote up or down something that might happen uh, okay we're gonna I'll just set that one aside Alvin remind me to come back to it but Trina if you if you get him you know try to wait till we finish one and then and jump in with that you that you're prepared to move forward gotcha okay All right. thank you All right. thanks okay 175 St. James rep plate Front porch per 1939 photo with a few changes. Okay. So, so Commissioner Walsh, Walsh, I'll interject on this one. Yep. Um, the property owner is has notified me that he is in, in the process of selling the property, and so therefore um, he has decided not to. Uh, basically do anything with the, uh, the front porch. So he's not doing, he's doing no further property and no further work on the property? That is correct. So he wanted me to sign off because this has been a, a, a court issue between him and the Office of Housing for the City of Springfield. He wanted me to sign off on the work that he had done, which he, he did, I, I would say about 90% of the 
that the porch has replicated the 1939 photograph. However, the the posts are um, on the porch. They uh, there's some slight variations where the footings of the the posts don't replicate the 1939 photograph, as well as the ornamental features at the tops of the posts don't. Um, Match the 1939 photograph. So for that reason, I couldn't sign off on the work that he had uh, performed, and I asked him to come before you guys to uh, resolve the matter. But uh, because he's in the middle of a pending sale, he is uh, applying to uh, to do anything further. Okay. Um, so. So so our only option is to just vote down the application. Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, but again, it, it is up to you guys. You don't necessarily have to vote it down. I mean, it's really up to you guys as to whether you believe that the uh, the work that he's done is acceptable. But if you if you find that it's not acceptable, it's not up to the thir 1939 photograph. Then, for that reason, you can deny it. Well. Okay. Yeah, we can. can we, there was no no additional public comments came in on this one because this is continued. So, all right. No, no correct. Okay. I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for 175 St. James Ave to replicate the front porch as close as possible, uh, with by the 1939 photograph, with exception of the ornamental brackets at the top of the post, as well as missing elements to the base of the post. Property owner seeking approval without having to to replicate these features due to the cost. So moved. Second. Okay. So we have a motion. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, my, my position, I think, is that we should that we should, I think we should deny the application. Uh, now, if the person buying this understands it's in a you have some information, right, Alvin, relative to the person buying it, understands that anything he does has to come before the commission? I have spoken with the prospective buyer, and he understands that this matter is before you guys. Um, so, so he's knowledgeable of it. Okay. Any other discussion on, it, on the uh, motion? Okay, hearing none. Was that was that Commissioner Duquette? Were you saying something to us? No. Okay. All right. Okay. You're hearing that. I'll take the, the, the roll call vote on 75 St. James. Commissioner Kroll? No. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Two full bedrooms. Commissioner Nardi? Can you please just explain one more time? A, a yes vote does what? A, what? a yes vote accepts accepts it the way it sits no, no, right no. now. I brought that up three feet, so it's going to be decorative. Okay, I'm not sure if someone's talking. If you're not part of this this application, could you mute your mics, please? Because I think yeah. we got a little confusion there. Yeah, I'm sorry. That there's a lot of over talking, so I could not understand what the motion. Uh, okay. What so, the discussion was. I already, I already, I already started the vote, uh, but but it's not complete. Is there any? I'm going to just back it up a little. Is there any other discussion on the motion? The I'd motion. Like to, I'd like to make a little discussion. Yes, uh, please. The guy, the guy spent a lot of money trying to do it right. He bought hung and groove for the floorboards. Um, you know, he hired a, a specialist to come in and do the scroll work and everything. So mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely going to have to vote yes, because even though it's not 100%, it is 90%, and he really went out of his way to try and make it look good. And even if the posts are, you know, a centimeter off or an inch off, mm -hmm. you, you know, not allowing him to uh, to be able to, you know, have that accomplishment, that's why I, I'm voting yes. Nice. Okay. No, thank you. Mike? My position, uh, because I didn't have, I mean, I know I've seen the picture, but I, 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 needed, I needed to hear what you'd like to say, Commissioner McFarland, was only that I didn't want, it, I didn't know if this buyer coming in would you know, come and just accept it the way it is, or if the potential was that he might improve it as well. Um, 
Okay, now I'm glad you added that. So I'm going to go back to this vote, and just because of the confusion and some of the voices there, I want to make sure that we had the discussion correctly done. So anyway, Commissioner Kroll? And a, and a yes vote, one more time, is? To accept that work on the House the way it's been done. Okay, yes. Okay. And Brian, uh, Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh would be a yes as well. Um, okay, that, that then that passes that way. Hopefully the new owner will come before us with even more improvements to that property. Uh, Commissioner Walsh, I believe we have uh, the contractor who's assisting um, the homeowner for uh, Buckingham Street is on the line. All right, let me uh, get the Buckingham file back in front of me here. All right. Okay, so this is an application for certificate of hardship to add a back door to the rear of the house, secondary way of ingress and egress. I'd like to repair the existing porches. Uh, if the if you can now just tell us what your plan is, and go ahead. Hello. Okay. Unmute your mic. Whoever's going to talk. Oh. Can you hear me? I can. Go ahead. Okay. So um. We were asked to put a, a roof over the, the, the porch that they're doing in the, um, the rear of the house. Right. Um, I walked the property with, with Alvin and, and I gave him some, um, uh, uh, some sketches of what we're, we had in mind. Oops, he can't hear you now. You just, you're, you just muted again. There you go. Was there a question? I'm sorry. It, it no, you, your mic all of a sudden muted again, so we didn't hear what you were saying. Oh, it's roughly um, a 13-foot wide uh, triangle roof we're going to put right on top of that so that, so that there's coverage over that, that porch that's built outside there. Right, but are, what are, are the, what's the material design of the actual porch and posts and roof going to be? Uh, uh, six, six by standard six-by-six six posts. Um, Two by eight construction of the um, the roof, and we'll tie it in with the architectural shingle that was approved at the last Zoom meeting. Right, but I mean, are there any historic? Are you using historical features or uh, on the porch? Yeah, it's gonna. Uh, we're matching. We're matching the dormers that are already on the house. They're just. They're just gonna be bigger. Okay. Alvin, do we have? So if, if you're sitting, go ahead. Go ahead it's okay. I just thinking out loud. Um, if, you, if I don't know if Alvin has pictures there, but the dormers that are currently existing, we're just gonna we're gonna make them just like that, except 13 feet wide. Okay. Well, I do have a picture of what's there right now, but what's what we're looking at is it looks like a very rough, almost deck-like thing, with some, you know, steps. It really doesn't look like it has any any finish to it, and the door, the door. It, itself is not something we, we would normally okay like that yes we're, we were made aware of that and we're, we're gonna um we're gonna get a, a historic door we're okay. we're ordering a, a door already so she doesn't know about that and okay. um the deck that you see there run six six posts each corner and we'll miss the um the dormers that you see there already yeah yeah i understand that part it was, it's it's what's underneath that that dormer that we have some concern about. What will be the because um, Alvin's making this now so we can see it. You know, so you're what yeah. you're saying you're making a dormer over this door that's going to match those two up on the up on the Correct. roof. And Correct. Yeah. You're making a dormer or a roof? Well, a roof to match the dormer. We're, 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 we're putting a roof, but it's going to be some triangular like the dormers. Yeah, same pitch as the dormer. Okay. Correct. But, but, Correct. Yep. But the, the, where we need the detail 
I mean, I'm not sure if that's acceptable to all the commissioners, but where we need the detail is it is actually in the, the porch itself. You know, the railing, is it going to have railing? Is it going to be uh, open with yes, the lattice with, you know, how is that all going to be put together? Oh, there, there's, um, there's two houses um, on, the, on the street. One of them is directly next door. I, I think the railing height is about uh, 22 inches. Uh, we're going to match that so it looks like it, it ties in. And then um, wrought iron rails. Okay, do or we have it? You know, like pipe railing? Yes. Alvin, do we have any other pictures for that? Uh, I, don't, I don't have any other uh, pictures. No other, no other renderings? The, the um, only picture we have is of the property that he's also working on on West, 95 Westminster Street. I'm not sure if he's looking to use that as an example. Are you looking to use Westminster as an example? Yes. Okay. All right, can you guys see the Westminster Street property? I can't see it yet. I'm seeing blank. blank. Okay. One second. We have 95 in our in our packet for the front door. Okay, there it is up on the screen now. Um, okay, any commissioners have questions of the petitioner or the contractor? So it, this is Walter. My, so my yes. question would be, if I'm hearing this correct, if you're suggesting that we use 95 Westminster as the model for what the porch would look like as far as the railings, the posts, the lattice, and from the rear view of the picture, the roof overhang would look like the, similar to the gables above it. Correct. Right. The only thing that's missing is what would the door look like? Um, he did, I, I, he did submit a new picture of a door, I believe, too. Yes, I submitted one to um, to Alvin. I'm not sure if he has it there. Uh, just waiting on approval for that before I can order it. And it does take three to six weeks for that door. Okay. And well, if, um, Alvin, if that one's approved, we can do... Okay. And and where would the what would the roof cover? If that one's approved... We, as far as the size the roof, of the roof? Um, the roof is going to cover the whole port. About 13, 13 feet, 6 inches. And if that door is approved, we could do the exact same door on that, on that door, which will tie it into the neighborhood even more, actually. Same one proposed for 95. Okay. Correct. This is the door you're proposing right there? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions, commissioners, for the petitioner or the contractor? And again, I want to specify that uh, this is a continued matter, so therefore you guys have the option to uh, approve it today. If you feel like you, you need more details, then you can certainly uh, table up the matter. Continue it again, right? The difficulty that I'm having being able to say yes or no is that the, the property owner is asking us to imagine all this rather than actually seeing some type of sketch or drawing or whatever. Well, this is, this is the one we approved the siding, correct? Yes. yes. That's, yeah. I mean, we approve the siding on this. I, and if it's if you're making a, a a porch with a rail like like the um, uh, like 95 Westminster, so I can look at that and I can kind of visualize that the lattice. I mean, that looks like you have it up against solid wood, which you probably wouldn't be doing then. On on. 
Oh, we can do it. We can do it exact or without. Okay. Let me just read what I'm going to just read what this application says again. Okay. This is relative to the, the door. To re, it says, I would like to also like to re repair my existing porches. I need an additional way out. So the door we can take care of. I think we could separate them. I mean, the existing porches remain the same in return to their natural state, but there's no, we're not seeing, I forget, we're not, let me go back through the pictures because I'm just not seeing what a natural state was for that particular property. Well, those other porches are actually on the side and in the front. But we're just going to return those to the the like they were before, which I believe was Douglas fir, Douglas fir on the um, tongue and groove on the floor, and okay. just uh, but those are like natural height railings. Okay, so right now I'm, I'm having an issue with with details and and materials and specifics. Um, I actually don't have a problem with the door. Um, any other commissioners want to jump in on this? Calvin, was it you that put the door up? Could you put the door up again for me? Okay, no problem. Give me just Please. A okay, one sec. Thank you, Alvin. Let me get that in. I'm thinking we may want to take this in two parts, um, two separate motions, uh, because I don't think I have enough information on the uh, rendering of the porch to make it to make a to approve it. I mean, I'm, what I'm hearing, I think, would be approvable, but it has to be very specific and in writing. We have to be able to see it. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, so we can see it and, and judge it that way. And also, so we have a record of what, what you've said you were going to do. So, so it will be done in that manner. Uh, and um, But the door, I actually don't have a problem with. Any other commissioners want to jump in? I would agree. Okay. Um, let's take the door first. If I entertain a motion on the application to... Uh, Break it down here to add a back door to the rear of the house or a secondary way of ingress and egress. And the site, you know, utilizing the door uh, uh, model and picture that's been given to us. So moved. Okay. I second on that motion. Second. Okay. Any other comment? Any discussion, I mean? No? Okay, I'll call the roll. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. All right, so we're, what we've, we're approving, uh, Tarina, we're approving the, uh, the door. Uh, uh, I'd also entertain a motion for the uh, for the porch. Is this what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, you know, we, I don't know if we can. Alvin, help me out on this. Can we? Can we? Can continue part? Can we just continue the porch? That, that's fine. You can continue a table it, however. Yeah, I, I, I think I might recommend that we continue the porch, because we just need. Hopefully, the contractor understands what we need more. We need details, you know, we need like you know, a just a, a decent rendering, the materials, you know, what the, the, what the railings are going to look like. I know you said iron pipe, but none of that's in the application. If it was in the application or something. So my recommendation is we continue this to the next meeting. You said it's going to take longer than that to get the door anyways. Yeah. So, um, okay, cool. so a set of detailed drawings for the, um, the porch and the rails 
just a, and, a, and, a and legitimate rendering. It doesn't, you know, I don't know how it, it has to be somewhat detailed. I don't think you need an architectural drawing, but it, in the, the list of the materials, uh, you know, we have people that have done hand sketches that worked fine because they were detailed enough with sizes and railings and, and things like that. And others who have said, this house has this, this is what it looks like. Here's the size, here's the material we're going to use. And, and they put those details in front of us so we can make a, a, a better decision. Okay. You see this sketch? No, I can see it, Val. <laughs> okay, so the idea to the homeowner is, can you give us something like this? It shows a pipe rail. It says what the, the materials are, something like that. I, I can't see it. Oh, you can't see it. Well, he put it, Al sketched something and put it on the front of the house. Oh, nice. That's what it looks like. Uh, but you're going to, that looked more like a, like a porch. And I think you're doing more of a, uh, of a, well, an enclosed, he, he looked more like an enclosed porch. I think you're doing an open porch, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, right, so so have my, to my suggestion that. is that if someone wants to make a, a, a motion in, in any motion you'd like to make, Certainly, we'll, we'll entertain it and vote on it. So, so can we con con can we continue the porch in details? Yes, we can. So we can I would make like that to, motion. I would like to make that motion, please. Okay, second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Only that we we hope that the homeowner can bring us some kind of visual that shows us exactly what they're asking us to vote on, shows us the materials and and the uh, configuration of the materials. Thank you, excellent. Any other discussion? Yes, do you have a date for that? Alvin? The next meeting is September 17th. Okay. 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 All right, any other discussion on the motion? Okay, I call uh, Commissioner Kroll. Yes. Commissioner McFarland. Yes. Commissioner Duquette. Yes. Commissioner Nardi. Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. Okay, well, we'll we're, we're halfway there for you. All right, um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. <laughs> Um, I said, guys. Well, we're on to 95 Westminster right now. That's on our hearing, okay. new hearing. So you want to stay on for that, I think, right? No? Yes. Okay. This is an application for certificate of appropriateness. Replacement of the front door, wood door with window panes at the top. And the, the door is the same one we just saw, correct? Correct. Okay, who's the uh, petitioner here? Janal Rentis. Okay, it says owner, extremely clean. Okay, the you have a company name? Okay. Yes, yeah. All right. So, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add for the your door replacement? Um, nope. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion. No, oh, there it is. I'd entertain a motion to accept the application for certificate of appropriateness for the door, uh, front door replacement 95 Westminster with the uh, 4642 low EIG door as presented. So moved. Okay. A second. Second. Okay. Any uh, discussion on that? I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, this is a new matter, so you guys would have to continue it. Oh, I keep. I thought we were still in. Sorry about that, myself. Yep, new. I thought I kept because we were de dealing with it a minute ago. I thought we were still in continued. Uh, uh, okay, for public comment, for our, you know, to allow appropriate uh, public comment, we mm -hmm. have to uh, continue to the next meeting. Uh, so. I entertain a motion to continue. So moved. Okay, second. You said uh, the second. Oh. Say that again. 
No, I'm already second. Oh, okay. All right. Any discussion on that second? I mean, second to continue. And hearing none, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Okay. So, yes, to continue. Not like we don't, we're almost at a good vote there, except that we do have to allow for public commentary or we, you know, everybody has the, has the right to comment. Okay. So this will be on for the 17th as well? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Next is 151 Piney Woods. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is an application for certificate of non applicability at 151 Piney Woods. Michael Olkin, build a 12 by 16 deck adjoining the back of the house. A deck shall not be visible from the public right away. Um, can you tell, fill us in on what, how, what's, what we're doing, Mike? Sure. Um, and actually, when I put this in, I was not considering uh, uh, Fergalade Avenue, which is around the corner from us. Okay. Uh, Alvin came out. He, he did find that uh, you can see uh, the back of our house. Uh, from uh, and okay, yeah, I do have a picture. Yeah. 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 So I put that, I put it in as non applicability, but, uh, you know, obviously um, there's something to consider here because uh, it would be slightly visible uh, from that right away. Okay. Is there, do you have any? Do you have something that you think you could do that would make it? Have you considered what you might be able to do to make it uh, uh, historically uh, okay? Sure. Um, well, I mean, you know, the uh, we'd obviously go with a, a railing that's you know between thirty six and forty inches high. If there's a particular type of railing that would be uh, more palatable. Uh, historically speaking, we would go with that. Um, yeah. I mean, another option that I've talked with the builder about, which is a little less uh, uh, pleasing to us, is uh, uh, raising the ground up so that the deck is actually lower to the ground and doesn't require a railing, and therefore the railing would not, there would be no railing that's visible mm -hmm. from Fur Blade. Uh, sure. I'd rather not do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, since just for everybody's information, all the hearings from for the rest of the evening are all going to have to be continued. So uh, for public commentary. Um, so the, the reason I'm telling you that is that, uh, uh, you know, we'll be hearing this again on the 17th. And that gives you some time to find, you know, I think if you look around, you might be able to find an appropriate railing that uh, would be very acceptable to us. Okay. And wouldn't probably be much more costly, just a different design than you might have been thinking. Um, you know, that obviously that that's that picture is just kind of deck like, and you'd have to look at it as more of a historic, the top part of that railing, more historic uh, feature. Uh, but you have some time, um, and you know, I don't think it's an in, insurmountable thing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, just take take some time in the next you know week or so because this can this hearing will be continued. You can tell us what you have next week, and we can take a we can take a vote. Uh, in the meantime, we do have to allow public commentary on the way that it's it's uh, shown to us now. Now that it is visible, we found it to be visible from a public way. Right, right. So, so this this picture here that you're showing that is that is really the one vantage point from which it would be visible. So yep. you, can, you can see the, the back door and the windows there. Um, you know, the visibility would be um, that area just by the shed and the fence there. Yeah, and, but it would only, yeah. only be the railing, right? What's that? Only be the railing, top of yeah, the railing. Right. You wouldn't actually be able to see the deck. It would just be a little bit of railing right. uh, in that area there. Well, that's what we would be concerned with. Whatever the top of the if the could find a historical appropriate design for the top of the railing, it would probably be okay. Any other commissioners have any ideas on that? I'm hearing none. Who owns the fence? I'm just curious. 
Uh, that that is our fence. Okay. Because I, I sort of remember in the past that there was something that the commission could not could the commission would have to look beyond the fence or vegetation because that's changeable. So even though it's something behind the fence and you can't see it, the fence could be removed or the vegetation could be cut down. I'm not sure if that's still the same way, commissioners. Yeah. But it, but it was in the past. Well, I'll have to look it up in the meantime. Yeah. Um, I mean, our concern is, is uh, obviously visibility. Well, I didn't drive by it. I may this week. The, the, if you look at the map, I would consider that almost minimum visibility anyways. Yes. But nonetheless, it is slightly visible. So I don't know that I'm as concerned uh, about, you know, the fence being moved or not. That's that's still way off. You know, mm -hmm. you'd have to be looking really hard driving around the neighborhood to see it. Yeah. Technically, it can be seen, so we have to deal with it in some manner. Or, um, but I mean, I might suggest to, uh, just to have the railing in in in, in the stairs be maybe just just find something that's a little more his, historic design for them, and, and you know, to match it might be something we could do. All other commissioners might have different opinions. I have a question about the railing style. Um, yep. If we uh, not necessarily have an exact match, but if we were to try to match it closely with the railing on our front porch, uh, is that the kind of thing we should be looking to do? Or are there other uh, guidelines we could go by? No, that's, you know, unless it's been altered dramatically in some past repair or reconstruction job, if it's a, fairly accurate to the, to the original, then that's probably very close to what we'd be looking for. Okay. All right. Um, All right. That is a guideline. Then. Okay. And I'd, I'd, uh, any other, any, Michael, anything else you'd like to add? Um, only that uh, I've come before the commission a couple times and uh, it's always a pleasure working <laughs> with Alvin Allen. I'm really glad he is the commission's liaison. He's a real asset to the community. Yeah, thank you. And I agree completely. Uh, I, I would entertain a motion to uh, continue the application for a certificate of non-applicability at 151 Plenty Woods. So moved. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Uh, the roll call, uh, Walter Kroll? Yes. Uh, Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yeah. Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. One sixty three finding roots. Okay. An application for a certificate of appropriateness, removal of existing windows, install new, that uh, says bronze replacement windows, all windows have grids and glass attached as window spec sheets. Okay, I can't really, I'm not sure what the, and then we have, uh, and updated is this a okay? So they up they so there's second application is to replace all windows with white vinyl windows that will match original look or design to the best of our ability. Originals seem to be white in color, therefore preserving the original look and design of the home. And this is an amendment to the original application, and it applies to window color and grid pattern. Okay, who's uh, here for representing 163 Piney Wood? Who's the owner? That's in, this is uh, Shane Manning, owner, and I also have my contractor, Zachary Hickman, on. Okay. Good evening, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Go ahead. So, yeah, we, um, we submitted that. We got some uh, documentation pictures from um, uh, sent from – Alvin Allen, um, very hard to tell 
um, with the existing pictures that we were provided and the research we had done um, prior to Shane purchasing this property. Um, it looks like there had been some work done by previous owner or, you know, when the bank took over the property. So there's a quite a mix of windows in the property right now. Um, looks like a good amount of existing windows and quite a bit of um, new vinyl replacement windows along the front of the house. Mm -hmm. They, as you can see there, um, so it's it's a little it's a little tricky there um, in that sense. So you know, upon investigation of us kind of you know looking at a lot of the neighboring houses and things in the neighborhood as well, um, it seems to be to be able to put a white vinyl replacement window with uh, six grids on top, no grids on bottom. Um, it seems to fit the house. Um, so that, that's just what we're proposing here to try to, you know, bring the house back to its original integrity as best we can. It's, it's difficult to, um, you know, see exactly what it was from the pictures provided as far as color with the black and white photo. Yeah. Um, I think the original, the original color probably would have been black. Uh, back what's that original photo oh there it is are there any original windows still left in the house if the i believe all these diamond windows uh -huh. on the third floor are original and they're all white it's hard to tell if they were painted over you know many many times or not but they, they all, all appear to be original and they're all white ex, uh, exterior and interior okay so it's very it's very difficult to tell um, if it was black or not. Um, it's also hard to tell the grid patterns on the inside or outside of the original photo as well. well. Yeah, back when the house was constructed, the grid patterns would have been, you know, real structural. They're, they're they're all real and they're they're located right now on the inside of the property. They're not on the exterior. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the replacement, I mean, obviously some grid patterns are replaced in between the glass now. Yep. All the original would have been on the outside. The, the, uh, the guidelines for historic properties that the grid pattern has to be on the outside, of the, attached, fixed to the outside of the windows. Uh, any commissions, commissioners have any questions for the uh, petitioners? Okay, um, we have we have only have one. Since as as I had stated a few minutes ago, everything has to be continued to the next meeting. We only have one uh, uh, public comment. I'm going to enter it to the record now. Okay. And it's dated September 1st, 2020. Dear Springfield Store Commission, I'm writing to speak out against the proposal for 163 Piney Woods to replace all windows with white vinyl windows. Property in question was altered without uh, historic commission approval sometime in around 2010 with some white vinyl windows being installed. The house was also altered in several other ways, including replacement front door, deck material being installed as a porch floor instead of tongue and groove. Do not believe the current owner did any of this work. I think we know that. Uh, Manning Capital LLC recently purchased the house as it was foreclosed. However, since the windows were replaced by a prior owner without approval, their style, design, and material should not be considered grandfathered. The unauthorized replacement windows altered the design from the rest of the house, including a six, introducing a six over one pattern instead of the existing nine over one and 12 over one. This dramatically altered the look of the house, which should be evident for all to see in the photographs. Appropriate grid patterns would hold the width of the light relatively constant and would vary the number of lights based on the size of the window. The proposed proposal does the opposite. It holds the number of lights constants and varies the width of the lights. This is historically inappropriate. Any replacement window should either mimic the dimensions of the original, or in the case of the unauthorized replacements, go back to the original pattern using the 1939 photo as a guide. As specified in the Springfield Store Commission's window guidelines and shown in the 1939 photo, replacement windows should be dark in color, should have a fixed exterior grids, not grids between the glass as contained in the application. 
the quote on page two and seven called for 42 inch by 57 inch and 44 inch by 60 inch fixed windows with grids, presumably to replace the middle oriel window on the right facade of the house and maybe the diamond stairwell window also on the right facade. This is absolutely inappropriate. Large fixed windows such as the one in the oriel are common in the Forest Park neighborhood and never had grids. Additionally, the diamond pattern, third floor and stairwell windows are incredibly detailed and should not be replaced. It will not be possible to create the tight, intricate pattern in a replacement material. Those windows are an incredible feature, uniquely crafted to the property and should not be discarded. Thank you for your consideration of this matter. Sincerely, Ralph Slate, 270 Long Hill Street, Springfield, Massachusetts. So that's for the record. And while, while we're just doing that, let me just add this for any further commentary uh, that public comment will be taken uh, obviously prior to this meeting's discussion and the second public comment period will take place after the meeting will remain open for 24 hours and to provide for public comment in writing mail Springfield Store Commission 70 Tapley Street Springfield Mass 0104 or email a-a-l-l-e-n at springfieldcityhall.com and to provide for public comment by voicemail 413-750-3223 uh, messages received will be played to the store commission or at the continued hearing date. Um, have you, so my question is, have you, have you looked into the potential of improving the historical appearance of the home? Or to, 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 you know, getting maybe clo more closely to the original historic uh, look of the house? Yeah, when we provided that quote with the six grid pattern on the top with nothing on the bottom to um, fit in with the neighborhood. And if I circle back to the last gentleman about the deck, I believe it was your words. If you look around, you might be able to find something for deck railings that would fit the neighborhood. I mean, if we look around and... Do we, I mean, I can count more houses with white vinyl replacement windows than I can. Uh, that. Well, that's different than what I suggested to him. I suggested to him he find a historical feature that was appropriate, not just something that was there. Um, because other houses if I have vinyl windows and they, whether, and they didn't come before, so they didn't do something legally, doesn't mean that we should allow it to be done without the proper approval of historic commission otherwise. Yeah, um, I mean... One, one thing we do have good going on, some of the uh, windows that are in the best shape or in the pro that are, you know, existing in the property are all those windows with the diamond pattern. Mm -hmm. So I, I strongly believe that we can salvage those windows um, and make those function properly. Okay, that's great. Um, so, you know, to keep that third floor and that hallway window, I think that that that's totally doable. We would just, you know, if, if we could keep those, we'd like to move forward with taking the white final replacements with the, um, you know, six grids on top, no grid on bottom, totally fine with putting the grids on the exterior of the house. If that needs be to bring it back to, you know, some of the historical original integrity of the neighborhood, totally doable. Mm -hmm. Um, not, not a big issue at all. It's just, you know, the way the world happens to be the grids between the glass. Cause I think everyone's wives love cleaning the windows and yeah. not, not having an, an obstruction nowadays, you know? Well, so, you know, we could totally change that. Um, you know, it'd be difficult um, to, you know, tr try to get a window with that grid pattern exactly like it. You know, I have done some research. Pella does make a window, but it's by far not exact to, you know, what was handcrafted years ago. Um, uh, well, yeah. Have you looked at the, uh, that the uh, windows that have been approved in the past relative to potential for yeah, the, the house directly next door um uh that uh bay state restoration just completed i mean i got insight from the project manager doug over there that used the mi windows with prairie grids um which doesn't seem to fit the you know original house of you know 163 piney woods i have no idea what it was you know next door although i think that's a beautiful look um, but I mean, based off the pictures that we were provided, it does have the, 
you know, six grids on top with no grids on the bottom. So that's kind of what we're looking for. And, uh, you know, completely understand if the integrity again of the uh, diamond pattern windows can't be, you know, altered or changed, um, you know, we can get those windows to function fine and we would be able to paint those to, you know, make them ma match the new white vinyl windows that we're hoping to be able to install. Okay. All right. Any commissioners have any other questions for the owner or the contractor? Nothing. We're awful quiet tonight, guys. Um, okay. Then I would ask is that a yes? Should I order windows tomorrow then? No, we, we can't vote on this till 7 10. Oh, I, I know, I'm kidding. I'm try, trying, okay, to, exactly. trying to lighten it up a little bit for us. Yeah, yeah. someone's yeah. going to talk. Well, um, <laughs> nope, no other commissioners are kind of tossing in on this, so I'm going to toss in a little bit myself. I, I just, I would, part of it is color because yep. the, the white was never an original color to a house like that. Um, dark was usually a more appropriate color. Um, I just like, you know, between now and the continued date, just take a look at some of the other things available. Consider, yeah. consider the grid patterns to match the 39 picture as opposed to just six over ones and because there were some 12 over ones or uh, actually I think I saw a 16 over, maybe a 16 over one there somewhere. And I do appreciate, let, let me not think that I do appreciate the fact that you will maintain and, you know, restore and maintain the, the, uh, the diamond grid windows. Uh, but we have to, you know, I, I got to entertain a motion to continue. If there's anything else you, you would like to add, it'd be great. Otherwise we yeah. have, you know, some comment, public commentary in the next day. Just, just real quickly. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, um, Mr. Allen for his time, you know, kind of helping Shane and I through a few of these things. Um, he's been great, super easy to deal with, very responsive, making things helpful for, you know, um, us rebuilding the front porch, bringing it back to its original integrity. Um, it's just kind of our, you know, one thing to cut in short. Um, you know, I know, you know, this is about the neighborhood looking the way it was. And that's important to you guys as well as it is to us. I know Shane bought this house with the, you know, excitement and like him and his, uh, his wife had for the architectural integrity of the house. Mm -hmm. um, I just know given the situation, um, we're, we're completely willing to look into some different grid patterns and things. We're just going to be not that, you know, uh, uh, our financial aspect has anything really bearing on you guys, but, you know, to put in uh, a window that's $550 throughout that whole house is just not going to be feasible. And we wholeheartedly feel if we can restore the diamond pattern windows and get a grid pattern that we can all agree upon to try to base off that picture. Maybe some of the 16 over one or the nine over one with a white vinyl window is going to look better than we'll be forced to leave the windows and the house is going to stay with, you know, nine different style windows in it, which we really don't want to do. Okay. Um, I mean, you said you were willing to put exterior grids. You already said that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. I'm yeah. saying, but but the, the to get the bronze window or the black window, I mean, the price jumps dramatically mm. to where with everything else we're trying to do to restore the porch okay. and inside, it's just financially not going to be feasible for us to maintain. Okay, well, that's that's a lot of information. Um, I, you know, well, just, like I said, just you know, take a peek and see if there's any other alternatives, and and we absolutely. entertain a motion to continue. I think we have the information. You know, we do appreciate that that there's a legitimate effort here being made. So uh, Just, it doesn't change some some of the guidelines that we operate under state law and things like that. But um, no, but um, you know, working together is a good thing. So uh, yeah, Commissioner Walsh, I just wanted to chime in with you. I, I agree with your commentary about the white versus the, the black, but the it might help with some kind of an Adobe. Um, drawing or photograph or whatnot where you can show the grid patterns that you're interested in installing would really help because right now what we're using is the the historical
physical picture, and that's what we see in our mind. So if you have something that doesn't just show the window on a piece of paper from a manufacturer, but it actually shows it in, in the photograph, and that's pretty easy to do with Adobe. That might really help a lot. Yeah, I mean, renderings are helpful. I can't even make out the look of the original window with the photo that's provided. So that's a little tough to figure out something to base off of. Well, that's why I'm suggesting show what you want to do because you're asking if to, to, for us to vote on something if it's appropriate. So if you show us rather than having us imagine something that we could be imagining it to be less appropriate than you do. Absolutely. Yeah, we could we could drum something up that for the and submit that and have that for the next meeting. That wouldn't be a problem at all. Good. I think that would help you. Absolutely. Right. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, any other comments? Any other questions from commissioners? I'd entertain a motion to continue 163 Piney Woods to the next meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Any, any discussion on that uh, motion? Uh, take a vote, Commissioner Kroll. Commissioner Kroll. You're not here. Commissioner Walter, are you there? Yes. Okay, thank you. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Walsh is a yes to continue 163. And thank you, you guys. Just, you know, take a look at it and, and you know, bring us back uh, so we can get a, a good look at the next meeting. Absolutely. I appreciate all your guys' time and input, and we'll, uh, we'll get that stuff together for the next meeting. Thank you very much. Have a good Thanks. evening. Thank you. you. Too. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Alvin. Appreciate it. Okay, 38 Riverview. This is an application for hardship to remove, repair, renovate front, front two-story porch, uh, added railing, changed lattice design. The cost to rebuild, re replicate the entire first, second floor porch. is real design detailed cost is a financial hardship. Okay, is, is, is Robert here? Yep, yep right here. We are. Okay. All right, just tell us what your plan is. Um, basically, um, this is the second time um, submitting. Um, so <clears throat> okay. the first time got turned down, I believe, because of um, originally I, I submitted a plan with without any railings, <clears throat> which okay. we aren't required. Um, so my new plan is um, it's a compromise. I, you know, I added a historical railing okay. uh, on the on the porch, and it's, also I um, changed it, the design of the lattice work. Um, to a more historical, <clears throat> detailed des design. Okay. All right. And I, I know I have some pictures of the existing, and then I have a rendering. So the top part of the porch, you're actually going to kind of enclose that bottom and keep it very similar to what it is now. Exactly. And that it's the bottom part. You're going to do full columns, and then now is the lattice going to be diamond or the lattice going to be square? Square. As it's drawn on the cranial square. Originally, I had diamond, um, yep. but you know, I changed the design because it's the square is more historical. Okay. Yeah, in some places, yes. Some places, no. Um, and the railing, the top of the railing, and the distance, and the type of are the, the, the balance can have any uh, design to them, just straight. Well, I, I, I gave I gave a picture of the, the railing that's going to be you know installed. Yep. It's basically a wood rail, you know, top and bottom with the balusters in between. Okay, well, I have a, I have a picture here, yeah. Okay. All right. That's all we're looking at for you today for you? That's it. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, I think I'm good. No, here. Okay, any commissioners have questions on 38 Riverview for, for Robert? You can see as you can see there that's his rendering, which is a pretty good one. Um, seeing that we have no questions for you, I guess we'll just uh, I'll ask for a, a motion to 
to uh, continue and we'll talk to you at the next meeting. I, so think, the, I, I think the rendering is very, very helpful and I, I make that motion. Okay, motion to continue, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the motion? Okay, vote, uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. Commissioner Walsh, yes. So we vote to continue the 38 Riverview application until the next meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you, Commission. You're welcome. Okay, 306, let me see, yeah. 306 St. James. Okay, this is an application for certificate of hardship. Replace asbestos asphalt shingles with vinyl siding. Alvin, was um, okay. So, do you have pictures of this to put up, Alvin? Yeah, give me just a moment. Okay. This is photos of the existing con conditions. Okay. Oh boy. Is a product that the uh, petitioner is looking to use. Okay, just kind of like a wood grain vinyl. Okay. Um, all right, do any uh, commissioners should have questions for the petitioner? Yeah, I have one. Um, are you replacing or are you covering the existing siding? I am covering the existing one. Thank you. And hi, this is Walter. Would you be covering the entire house or are you just doing the section of the house that has the asphalt shakes or shingles? My goal is to do the entire house. Okay. And will it be the same color? Is it all one color? Uh, I'm looking at that to, uh, to match the color that we have, the blue and the white. Uh, that's what I'm looking at right now. Thank you. Now, do we have any, oh, there's some porches and railings there. We don't have a picture of the, like the entire the house from the street. No, okay. All right. Any commissioners have any other uh, questions for the uh, petitioner? I have a question. Is the siding going to be the height of what the old, uh, um, you know, what the old clapboards used to be? In other words, are the siding, the three inch siding or the eight inch? What are you proposing? It's the, uh, I'm trying to use the regular uh, 4D uh, siding. Right, but we don't know the size of it. It comes two or three different sizes. So I'm assuming that you're going to try to make it look like it used to look. Uh, I do. Photo. Yeah, I, I did not see the, the old photo, so I don't know how it used to look like. I'm just going by what I'm seeing now. See. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Alvin, do you have the, the, uh, the historical photo of the house that shows the clapboards? Yes, I'll pull it up. It has some scalp to there. So it's part of the, it was attached to the application. Yeah. Yeah, that one. If you can make it bigger, 
There you go. See those boards are like about four inches each in height. Yeah. So that's what I'm guessing, because that's pretty close to standard. You're not proposing the ones that are really wide. No. No, okay. So it's gonna, it's gonna be the standard three and a half to four inches to the weather. That's how they say it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? Nothing? Wow. Okay, then I didn't take the, entertain a motion to, oh, there's, there's the picture I was wondering. Good clean house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, beautiful. Um, well, I guess it's just the, the motion to continue. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Well, then I just got to write my note here. Is the, did you pick the contactor? I'm sorry. Yes, we got some some estimates, and then we have a we have a contractor. We have a company called uh, uh, in our home improvement. Have you have they have they considered any his, uh, historical uh, like accents to this? I don't know if I'm using uh, the, the right words, but yeah, they gave me the the two estimates in that. They gave me one for all the type of uh, siding. It's called the plastic shape vinyl. Mm -hmm. But that one, it's the the estimate that they gave that he gave me. It was like really really expensive. It's kind of over my. It, it's over my budget. Okay, so the the stuff here is what you're actually proposing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, no other, oh, actually we're on the motion. Uh, let me take the, the roll on the motion. Uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes to continue to the next meeting. And uh, it's on the 17th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 53 Buckingham. Commissioner Walsh, I just want to uh, pre preface, preface this uh, particular matter. Um, so the I've spoken with both the homeowner as well as, uh, and that's Ms. Dice, as well as the contractors from NESCOR. Uh, they also, NESCOR also has their legal team. They may be on the call as well. Um, so what happened with this particular property is Ms. Dice hired NESCOR to install um, roof shingles replacing her pre-existing uh, asphalt with a stone coated steel material. Um, I was contacted by the building department to sign off on um, work that was to be done. Um, I notified both the uh, building department as well as NESCOR that the property was in a historic district and needed to have historic approval. Or actually, that, that might have just gone to the building department, but I believe the building department notified NASCOR um, that the property needed to have historic approval for the building department for the building department to issue the building permit. Um, I went out on, I believe, I don't have the date in front of me. I want to say it was July 29th, and um, at the same day that I was contacted um, by NASCOR to um, for an application to come before the historical commission, I went out and the and work was already being conducted as um, the, the same day that the, the application came in. And so um, I contacted the, the property owner, Miss Dice, uh, and just questioned if, you know, she gave authorization for NESCOR to move forward with uh, 
the application as well as the work. And she stated that she did not give authorization to the contractor to move forward. Um, and it seemed to be there was some dispute between uh, the homeowner, Ms. Dice, as well uh, what, between her and uh, Nescor in regards to the, the, the type of work that was performed. However, it's not up to you guys really to get into that whole back and forth, but really just to figure out is this material that she's looking to install or has installed, is it appropriate for the structure uh, material wise and as well as the design? So that, that's where we are today. We are, are, we are simply entertaining a, entertaining a application to, a, to uh, for the material and, and to replace the roof and the material if it's appropriate. Okay. Um, so there must be some, I mean, I know I have some pictures here of uh, roofing material. So the entire roof is completed? It is. Okay. Okay, well, any commissioners jump in if anybody has anything they'd like to ask. Uh, we have a completed roof with a stone coated steel roofing. And, and Alvin, can you put those pictures up for those of us who, who, who who might not have seen it. So this is what the shingles look like. It's almost, now what came off was architectural? Asphalt was. architectural? Correct, and this will also replicate the architectural look we have. We do have photos. The general passerby, and sometimes even the customer cannot tell the difference until they're told what type of roofing it is. Okay. Okay. Um, the only other thing that was done on the property um, was a top because you have the uh, the ridges coming to a point or, or a hip roof. Uh, there was a flat top. So that was done in uh, 090 EPDM. Roof. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's not, not but that's you fine. can't see that from Yeah, the, okay. From the no, that's fine. Thank you. Um, commissioners, any questions? Hmm. Anything from Nescor, if you did, looked like you had a question? Mm -hmm. No, nope. I was just waiting to hear if they were going to be. I have a question. Okay, Commissioner Nardi, go ahead. Can you tell me a little bit more about this material? This, this, these are steel, are they steel or are they aluminum sheets that are coated with this stone finish? They're gal aluminum that where the stone has been baked on from the factory. So it's, this roofing, uh, started its journey somewhere around 1983, mostly in California and Arizona, uh, because of the wildfires. Uh, so it's been tested and true uh, as far as Texas is involved, as well because of the hailstorms that they receive. And it, you know, you're you're not and you're not ended after a hailstorm with a completely ruined roof. They go basically across the roof line with with a puller like you would pull a dent from a car, uh, and with no no uh, destruction. So now they moved it up into the Northeast, going back as far as 2001. Um, uh, the roof itself also gets credits from the insurance companies because again, uh, a fire uh, in the neighborhood, the, the hot embers cannot ignite the roof. Sure. Again, because it's galv aluminum with a stone coated uh, so, that they got. Now when you, I know this is, I mean, we're, we're simply looking at the material and the installation of uh, mm -hmm. uh, what, did I, I mean, am I interpreting this right? That, that you, that you, they issued you a permit or they didn't issue you a permit? Which was it? No, it looks like there was confusion with our permit department and the permit was not issued because it was. Historic. They did forward you, they did tell you, you need to come to the historic commission. They did. Okay. Yeah, well, but, you know, prior wanted, to the roof was uh, completed. I just wanted to see that, uh, you know, what the, if we're on the same page with what process it happened. Okay, any commissioners have any uh, questions about the material or the installation? So I looked up NASCAR to find out if there were any complaints or problems with this. Oh, about the roof? 
about the material itself. And most oh, of the complaints okay. came from the fact that some of it was installed by installers that were not factory authorized. So can you tell so that's me? Not, that's not that's part I, of what we're, Well, I don't have any installers that are not factory authorized. Okay. Everybody's been through training. And even uh, some of the internal staff has been through training as well. Is this, is this material any heavier or lighter than? Lighter. The, Lighter. Like, that's what it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Lighter. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they, that particular issue that Al, Commissioner Nardi is not under our purview. Um, so we just have to wait to see if there's any public commentary about the, um, you know, it's different. It's certainly different, but it does, the pictures show it very much resembling a, an asphalt uh, roof. Yeah. So, we have a few pictures we could actually post up. I just don't know if Mike could do that. Of, of other completed projects that no, no we, we, I think what we have is sufficient. We have pictures of the roof completed and we have pictures of the prop. You brought some into the building department and they took a picture and they, they just put that up. Um, but, but um, you know, if there's nothing else that. Just, just to finish my comment, the, oh, okay, I'm not sorry. concerned about installer. I know that's not our purview. The reason I, why I brought it up is because this material is different material than than is on the building it's a galvanized so i guess what i'm asking is yeah. what happens with the aluminum gutters and so forth there are they going to stay back up there in other words we're going to have two different two different two different metals up the top how are they, they are they going to cause don't. electrolysis or what they don't touch they don't touch okay yeah, I wasn't even concerned about the gutters. Um, any other questions, Commissioner Nardi, or any other commissioners? Um, okay, then uh, I think we have information. Well, it's going to, as you know, it's going to go to public commentary for the next 24 hours. Anybody would like to add it, and we are required to continue to our next meeting. I'd entertain a motion to continue the application for certificate of. Uh, well, I have. Hello, excuse me. Yes. Um, I do have a question. I, I yes. would like to know uh, about the safety and 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 uh, the inspection and how if I know if my roof was installed, you know, properly. Yeah, that's a great. That was my main concern. That's why I went and did what I was did. You know, wanted to further this. You know, yeah. uh, with them doing the work without getting the permit nor yeah. getting the inspection done. Yeah, the um, I'm gonna. Apologize ahead of time, Ms. Dice, because I this is not anything permit or anything like that is not our purview. There's certainly okay. some city people you may talk to. Maybe Alvin can help you to point you in the right direction. I'm not sure if he can. All our all we're, we're, we can even kind of discuss is if it's a material appropriate. If and if not, if you know if it's different, this is different. But is it still? Do we think it's you know replacement and the and the view the uh, visual is is good enough so that we can approve it for you either under an appropriateness yeah. or hardship? Uh, you know we would have no idea whether something was installed correctly or incorrectly or I mean the permit thing it only throws it to us because they usually they're supposed to tell people when they apply for a permit that they can't have it till they have approval from the commission. Um, but any other potential for for uh, uh, installation or issues is not uh, nothing that we hear okay uh, but um what we are gonna i am gonna entertain a motion to continue to the 17th please we'll move. all right then thank you okay thank you second it is there a second yes is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the roll call. Uh, Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is a yes to continue. Um, so this is continued. 53 Buckingham is continued to the 17th. Thank you. Okay, thank you. There's no preservation historical. 
significant buildings. We have under other matters properly before the commission, a 1200 Main Street project review and letter of support for historic tax credits. Um, who's on to talk to us about that? Commissioner, well, this is something that you guys can vote on tonight. And again, this uh, letter of support, if you support it, will go to the Mass Historical Commission. Hold on one minute. We, I'd like to, uh, Barbara, if she could either mute herself, please. So there she goes. So, okay, thank you. Uh, okay, go ahead, Alan. Alvin, sorry. <laughs> okay, no, all I was saying is that um, you guys are just going to review the project, and um, if you're fine with the project, then you're going to um, authorize a letter to be sent to the Mass Historical Commission for su support of historic tax credits. Okay, so he's, who's here to speak on this Mass Mutual Insurance Building? Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Colin Kane. I'm a principal with Peregrine Group. Uh, uh, we also have uh, from our team, uh, we have Tim Mansfield, our architect from Cambridge 7. We have Albert Rett from McCrosty Historical, who is our preservation consultant. Um, Sam Bradner, who is my business partner. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that uh, Tim Sheehan uh, from Economic Development from the city is also on the call. Okay. Um, I, don't know if, I don't know if he's supporting or not, but I know he's on the call. Okay, go ahead. Um, uh, we, we very much appreciate your time, uh, particularly since you pushed the meeting a, an hour late. Uh, very much appreciate the, uh, the efforts of Mr. Allen to get us on the agenda tonight. Uh, we did this week uh, submit a full application of part one and part two uh, to both the SHPO as well as to National Park Services uh, for the uh, rehabilitation and repositioning of, uh, we call it 101 State Street, also known as 1200. Main Street, which is the 1908 headquarters of Mass Mutual Life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a building that is party walled uh, to the MGM Casino uh, and currently is owned uh, by MGM or one of its subsidiaries. Um, we have been working with uh, uh, looking in Springfield uh, for about two years. Uh, you know, the arrival of the casino, uh, other really strong uh, positive uh, development in the city of Springfield. Uh, you know, kind of compelled us to start looking there. Uh, and we've been working there for about 18 months with our architectural uh, and engineering team, as well as with McCrosty, understand how best uh, to position that building and, and bring that building back uh, to a more useful purpose. Um, uh, we have a brief presentation. Uh, if it's okay with you, Mr. Chairman, we'd like to run through. It's quite all right with me. Uh, I promise it will be brief. I know it's a late night. No, it's fine. Thank you. Um, uh, Tim's going to bring this up now. Yeah, hopefully everyone can see the uh, screen at this point. Yep. I'm going to go into slideshow mode. Hopefully it'll uh, be fine for everybody. Hang tight. There we go. Tim, if you can go to the team portfolio, that would be helpful. Page yep. three. Yep. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, member of the uh, of the commission, um, uh, our company, Peregrine Group, uh, we have an office in Boston. Uh, we also have an office in East Providence, Rhode Island. Um, our own office is in a 280,000 square foot, uh, nine building historical complex that was the original Rumford baking powder that we uh, basically got rehabbed uh, into a mixed use project. Uh, of roughly 193 apartments and 40,000 square feet of commercial and retail space. Our team has also, uh, including Cambridge 7 and McCrosty, who we've all worked together for quite some time, uh, have done a number of other uh, significant uh, historic rehab projects, uh, both in the Commonwealth as well as in Rhode Island, uh, as well as in North Carolina. Um, uh, you can see on this slide uh, some of the projects that we've worked on, uh, not all as a team, uh, when we look at the Ames Hotel and the Liberty Hotel, uh, the recently completed, not historic rehab, but new construction Williams College Inn, those are all projects that done, I think, to the highest standard by Cambridge 7 uh, and Tim's team. Uh, the, we were the project manager, Sam and I, uh, and our company on the Ocean House, which was a, a replication of an 1868, uh, you know, old school oceanfront hotel uh, that we completed 11 years ago. Wow. Uh, Please, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. No, I just said, wow, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
uh, you can see other projects, American Locomotive, which was a 200,000 square foot. Uh, they actually made Alco automobiles and railroad cars there. Uh, you see the Rumford Center where our office is. Um, and Sam and I recently developed a uh, 84 room uh, new construction hotel in downtown Newport right in the waterfront called Hammond's Wharf, uh, which was done very much uh, uh, in keeping with what we thought was the historical character of the city. Uh, so collectively, our team, uh, you know, over the past 20, 30 years has worked on very significant, um, we think, uh, very contributing projects uh, that mm -hmm. have hospitality components, uh, retail and commercial components, uh, as well as utilize uh, both federal and state historic tax credits. We have a very deep familiarity with uh, the SHPO requirements and enjoy working with uh, SHPO uh, uh, here in the Commonwealth, as well as with the National Park Services. The building itself, uh, you know, is uh, a, a, you know, an eight-story building originally constructed in 1908. Uh, it's, it, it still, believe it or not, has a, a few office tenants uh, that, you know, uh, very, very, but most of the floors are vacant. Uh, I think MGM has done it. They acquired it as part of their casino construction project. Uh, and I would say have done a very good job of maintaining the facility, uh, 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 you know, despite it not really being full. Um, they've been good stewards of the asset uh, since they acquired it. Uh, we looked at it very much um, as additive to the uh, hotel requirements in Springfield. Um, MGM uh, contributed a number of really beautiful rooms uh, to the community, uh, but by most accounts, at least under our due diligence, uh, the city remains under a hotel relative to the demands that the casino have uh, uh, outside of pandemic yeah. uh, that the casino has created um, as well as uh, really importantly uh, the convention center across the street um, so the thought was that you know the addition of 120 plus keys with a very modest uh, you know storefront retail um, and let's call it light fair bar restaurant on the first floor uh, would be consistent with what is happening in that area in the city of Springfield um, and we think economically viable. Uh, so we commissioned Cambridge 7 and McCrosty to you know, do a, a schematic concept design on what could fit. Uh, and, and, and Tim, I don't know if you wanna work through uh, for the commission kind of what we've come up with relative to uh, design uh, and perhaps Albert weigh in. Sure. So uh, good evening, everybody, and thanks for uh, inviting us. Um, the project is, as, as Colin mentions, is a great opportunity uh, to really bring the, bring the building back to life. Um, and our intent is, uh, frankly, to keep the historic facade, keep the facade as is. The windows are um, all, you'll see as we work out in the floor plan, uh, worked out beautifully to a layout of a hotel. Um, the one area that we have not developed yet, and so you see it probably quite uh, schematically here, is in the, um, in the ground floor level. Um, as you know, there's quite a bit of staging around the ground floor today that's part of the uh, preservation work and some of the uh, temporary protection work that MGM has around the building. But our, our intent would be to come back to you when we're really ready to show you what we're planning to do uh, for the retail area. So you can see in the historic photograph, uh, it's quite lovely, you know, as a street edge. And I think we want to bring it back to that and, and hopefully encourage uh, really a lively retail edge uh, on both State and Main Street. So this is the um, elevation on State Street. The hotel entrance would be 101 State. You'll see it in the floor plan. Mm -hmm. For, from Main Street on the, uh, the rendering on the left-hand side, uh, again, the retail component that you see at the ground level here uh, is undesigned yet, but our intent would be to bring it back to sort of that original character. And we would uh, uh, we look forward to presenting that to you when we get to that level of design. The south facade is a working facade. This is part of the areaway um, leading from State Street. Uh, it's got a nice brick facade uh, and the window and the fenestration will all be uh, brought back to its uh, historic character. Um, the floor plan actually works quite brilliantly for uh, transforming from an office uh, building to a hotel um, in a number of instances. 
at the ground floor plan, uh, what you see here is a rough schematic of how we can see the programming of the building. As I mentioned, 101 State would be the formal lobby to the hotel. We um, have this ability to have a gracious lobby leading to the elevator core. And then as you continue down through the first floor plan, you run into a nice bar, restaurant. We bring that back. As, as Colin mentioned, it would be um, uh, more leaning towards a bar with light refreshments than a full service restaurant. Um, and then there's another opportunity for a retail tenant here off of Main Street and then back a house, which helps service the, uh, the hotel. A typical floor plan, this is actually the second floor plan. We're able to get 17 keys, 17 guest rooms per floor plan. And as you can see in the layout, we're able to have every window work quite elegantly with each room. Okay. Uh, there's some unique shaped rooms, which is very typical of a historic renovation like this. Uh, we think it adds character to the hotel, uh, uniqueness. Um, but it will be a combination of kings and double doubles um, and each obviously having this, um, uh, this terrific sort of layout. What's important here is that we're maintaining the main corridor. This historic corridor right down the center of the uh, building uh, still has quite a bit of uh, historic detail, base molding, uh, marble base molding, some uh, uh, stone trim. Uh, and, our, and what has worked out is that we're able to maintain that corridor through all, all the floor plans. All the windows will be, they have some millwork around the windows and they would be restored as well. Looking at a typical floor plan, uh, well, the second floor, the only curiosity about the second floor is that we have a transitional stair here that leads to the stair that goes down to the uh, main street exit here. But once you get up onto the third to the eighth floor, it's all the same. Again, the historic corridor is maintained. The elevators are all maintained. The perimeter windows and so forth are all restored. And the guest rooms, again, around 17 rooms per floor. So That's it's a pretty... No, mm, yeah. no, I'm just saying it sounds like the type of project uh, I'd be happy to support. Great. Um, just some images of some of the historic pieces that we'd like oh, to keep. My. So you can see this is the lobby that uh, has some wonderful marble and detailing. Uh, and we have two images there. This is that large corridor that I mentioned. In some of the in some of the floors, we have some marble flooring or detailed flooring. The ceilings will be uh, brought back to life. These are not original. And then, of course, in the exterior, we're going to be doing some repointing and bringing back the masonry, cleaning it, uh, and really have it be quite an elegant. Uh, presence at the corner of state and Maine. So that's all we got. That's beautiful. And I would just add that, um, you know, Albert Rex from Across the Historic Advisors, uh, you. You, you folks have been through this before. You know the Mass Historic Commission uh, from the state application process requires that we do this. We ask you for these letters of support three times a year. So we'll be back in January, uh, April, and again next August, and probably the following three as well. Um, the project does have to meet the Secretary of Interior standards uh, relative to the MHC review and the um, National Park Service review. Um, I think you'll note that there were changes to the exterior of the project done um, fairly early on, actually, in the building's history. Um, under the guidance of the Park Service or Mass Historic, we're not required to um, replicate, you know, what was there historically, mm -hmm. but address what we have today and make it as uh, historically appropriate as possible. Yeah. So we're continuing to work with Cambridge 7 and the uh, uh, Paragon Group to figure out what the, uh, obviously what the ground floor is going to look like. And that, it, as um, Tim said, that a, a design will be advanced as we move forward through the um, tax credit process. Yeah, if I could just add one thing, this is Sam Bradner also with Paragon Group. I, I think um, the, um, Cambridge 7 and McCrosty have done uh, you know, a, a heavy lift already, but we're still very early in the process. I think as probably the commission is aware, you know, familiar with these tax credit applications, you want to, you want to vet the, the eligibility and the opportunity to see uh, those tax credits come to the project very early because they are critical to the six, the economic success of the project. Uh, and so I think for, to Tim's comment, uh, we don't see this as uh, the, the final review of this by any means, um, but but knowing that there is that kind of gating issue of the at least the initial endorsement um, by the commission, and then we'll have uh, obviously ongoing discussions both at this level as well as with uh, Tim Sheehan's office 
uh, and, and the community as we advance the project and it starts to hit, you know, kind of check off some of our viability boxes as we go through the due diligence process. Excellent. Mr. Thank Chairman, you, thank you very much for the presentation. Mr. Chairman, commissioners, yeah. if I might just speak uh, uh, relative to the project from the city's perspective. Oh, um, please do. Thank uh, you. Obviously, we're supportive of the request coming before this evening. Um, that, as was indicated, this project's going to have further review, um, and there needs to be some modifications relative to uh, the uh, MGM plan for development uh, between the city and MGM to accommodate for it. But clearly, this this project taps into the synergies uh, both from the convention center and our desire to increase uh, meeting and convention traffic in downtown and obviously uh, the, the synergy that's been created relative to MGM in general. Um, and again, we're, we're advancing a master plan for the whole convention district area. Um, as many of you realize, uh, there's a number of properties um, that are immediately within the vicinity of this project and the casino that need attention. And uh, we think that this project will provide a lot of synergy to make those developments advance as well. Um, sorry, the light just went out. It's okay. <laughs> we can still um, see it. But we're, uh, we're completely supportive of the uh, request before you tonight to begin to get the uh, capital stack for the project organized. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any questions from commissioners? I would certainly entertain a motion to uh, issue a letter of support for this project? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion on that motion? Okay, I'll call a vote. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner, let's see who we got here. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Uh, so that's approved. We absolutely are happy to send a letter of, of a support for this, and we'd look forward to seeing you in three months to issue another one and to get an update. We'll get an update from you and then issue another one. Thank you Thank guys you very much, much for Thank it. you. Thank you With very much. We're going to in person, I hope. Take care. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me see. We have uh, for another letter of support 57 School Street. And Dr. Starn? So just to let you know, this is a letter of support uh, for, I guess it's going to go to the City of Springfield Office of Procure Procurement, but um, Dr. Starnes can kind of explain um, what's necessary here. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Starnes. Yes. It's, uh, well, first, let me just start off by saying thank you, um, Alvin Allen. My said has come before this commission on several occasions, and you've always made this process palatable. We thank you so much. Uh, we're looking for a letter of support because we want to have the exterior, as the uh, contractor labeled it, soda blasted um, or sandblasted, as it were, so that we can have the brick uh, get down to its original color, get rid of the graffiti, um, just really restore the building and make it look uh, newer, if you will, but not interrupt the historical integrity of the brick. So that's okay. what we need. Okay. Well, there's no adverse effects from this. Is there any potential danger to do damage? Well, not according to the okay. uh, contractors. Uh, originally, we came before you several weeks ago to ask if we could have a letter of support with regards to pointing. But because there's so much that needs to be done to the exterior, it, you know, you can barely tell that the, the building is being pointed. So that's why we're moving forward to get the entire building like a, not a facelift, but just almost a, a, a what is it, um, renovation, not renovate, restore. We want yeah. to restore it. Okay. Uh, commissioners, any commissioners have questions for Dr. Starnes? Uh, 
Just a word to the wise. I do know that the if the building has taken on any federal tax credits for historical um, rehab and so forth, you have to be very careful. The Department of the Interior has very specific guidelines about not um, blasting brick because you can lose the face of the brick off and now it becomes porous. So whoever's doing this work better be very clear on what they're doing. If it, I've never heard of soda blasting, but sandblasting could really hurt the brick. Well, they specifically put soda blasting, and I, too, hadn't heard of sand, soda blasting, so that's why I just said yeah. sandblasting. Yeah. But they would know better than I, so mm -hmm. it probably, indeed, is soda blasting. Hmm. Well, I don't, I don't know the difference between the two, but thank you, Commissioner Nardi. That's a good point to make. Any other commissioners have any other comments or questions? No? I just want to mention that um, soda blasting is a bit different from sandblasting when mm -hmm. um, it comes to the bricks. It, it's a lot less abrasive. It's considered like a mild because the um, chemical reaction as well as the uh, force of the, the blasting is used to uh, kind of Excellent. Thanks. I would suggest, as I do on any project that's going to use something like this, to pick a place that is a yep. lot not very visible, maybe two feet by two feet. Let them do it, and then inspect it before you let them go crazy with the whole building. Make sure what the end result is going to look like ahead of time. It's all up to the, whoever it's going to blast. It's up to what kind of pressure he's got going. Is he really savvy? Is he careful when he gets near the corners? So I know you love your building, so you want to be very careful. Good advice. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions? I'm going to entertain a motion to issue a letter of support for this uh, to Dr. Starnes. No move. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'll call the roll call vote. Commissioner Kroll? Yes. Commissioner McFarland? Yes. Commissioner Duquette? Yes. Commissioner Nardi? Yes. And Commissioner Walsh is yes. So that, that approves. We're happy to issue that uh, letter of support. One, um, last, one last comment. Yes. Because architects can't, can't stop talking. Um, <laughs> okay, we need that sometimes. Something else that I've learned in the past is after they do do the sometimes it's recommended that the brick face is sealed because they're gonna lose some of that waterproof uh, ability because it's already, it's been uh, fired and it's nice and uh, hard on the surface because they lose some of that. Sometimes they recommend a seal, a clear sealer so that all those pores don't start soaking up dirt because then you'll never get it clean. Got it, that's good. Do, do you, well, you know what, I'll ask the contractors, but ha had you heard of any sealer that was uh, recommended? Um, you can look it up in the Department of Interior. Just look for the website, okay. and they usually tell you that kind of stuff. Definitely go with a flat, not a gloss. A flat, not a gloss? Not well, I, gloss. I hope the people not doing this for gloss. you will have all that knowledge at their fingertips. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Is there any other matters properly before the commission? This is true. And let me just, for anybody that might actually be watching, let me just, <laughs> just go over the public comment. Uh, let me see. You, you, to provide public, public comment on any of the applications, uh, you can write to Springfield Store Commission, 70 Tapley Street, Springfield, 01104, or email aallen at springfieldcityhall.com. And provide for public comment by voicemail, 413-750-3223. Messages received will be played at the historic commission hearing or at the continued hearing date. Uh, commentators should uh, state their name, address, and company or organizational affiliation in addition to the items their comment pertains to. Um, is there anything else before the commission? No, hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We're adjourned.
Thank you. Okay, thank you guys. All right, thank you all.